calling on AGL's board, shareholders and the general public. We need to deal with this climate crisis. This is a story about hope. We know that renewables are the cheapest source of energy generation. It's a story about the power of collaboration. And how a diverse group of people took on Australia's biggest climate polluter and won. Climate change is happening now and to all of us. We have seen 35 million hectares of our country burn. The corals on our Great Barrier Reef bleach. The main driver of the climate crisis is coal, burning coal in power stations. Coal is the number one driver of climate change and AGL burns a lot of coal. As a mum, it's really scary because it feels like we are going blind into a scenario which we don't want to be in. Increased natural disasters, food security, species getting wiped out, huge fires, floods. Instead of changing it while we still have time. Australia has been going backwards. This is coal. Don't be afraid. The Don't treasure. be scared. It's coal. It was dug up. It was, it was quite devastating, you know, from a community interest perspective, to see someone that was pro-coal and that blatant about it. What do we want? Climate action! When do we want it? No! Limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees will require rapid and far-reaching transitions in how we manage energy, industry, buildings, transport and cities. AGL provides gas and or electricity to almost 4 million people in Eastern Australia and generates most of that power through coal. We knew we couldn't stand back and do nothing because AGL is Australia's biggest climate polluter. So we knew that shifting this company would shift the entire energy system. So Greenpeace launched a campaign against AGL. In early 2021, AGL had coal closure dates right out to 2048, well after the 2030 cutoff date that the UN and the International Energy Agency said Australia must stop burning coal to act meaningfully on climate change. We have one of the dirtiest, most polluting electricity grids on the planet. Australia is one of the biggest contributors to climate change in the world. We dig up a lot of coal and send that around the world, which causes huge amount of climate pollution. We're currently based on our policies on a trajectory to three degrees of global warming. And like in practice, that is absolutely catastrophic. So our goal with targeting AGL is to get them to shut down their coal burning power stations by 2030 and replace them with clean, cheap, renewable energy. If we could move this massive energy company and shift them towards renewable energy, the dominoes were going to fall and we were going to get much faster action all round. So AGL was the second company in Australia to be listed on the Australian Stock Exchange in 1837. So it's a company with a very long and proud heritage. And around about 2007, 8, 9, was developing uh, the largest wind farm in the Southern Hemisphere and a whole lot of other wind projects around the country. It was one of the most progressive generator retailers. Right around the time that they were commissioning their wind farm, the Fukushima uh, nuclear power station was um, taken out by a tsunami in 2011 and its owner, TEPCO, had to rapidly offload its assets. In a fire sale, it sold the Luoyang A power station in Victoria and AGL picked it up for a song. Not long after that, the New South Wales government decided to sell its two coal power stations, Bayswater and Liddell, and AGL picked them up. They took ownership of the most polluting coal power stations in Australia. The leadership of AGL were very opportunistic. They saw these cheap, dirty, coal burning power stations that few people wanted and they thought we'll take those and so unfortunately this company has gone from being somewhat of a renewable energy leader to being Australia's biggest climate polluter. 
They were responsible alone for about 8% of Australians' carbon emissions. And it was a company that was still producing about 85% of its power from coal and only had a makeup of about 10% renewables. And that 10% of renewable energy generation hadn't changed for like five or six years. AGL bet that coal would be around for a long time and they could make a lot of money off it. They bet that the world wouldn't be acting on climate change. They bet that the Australian community wouldn't be putting pressure on them and they lost that bet. Greenpeace as an organisation launched the campaign with a big investigative report. There was a bunch of studies that happened in the early days, you know, we will do focus groups, um, we'll do surveys, and that analysis revealed that most Aussies weren't aware of the role that AGL was playing in contributing to the climate crisis. AGL had, had invested millions in having us all believe that it was a clean energy company with wind turbines uh, on the side of the freeway. These lovely photos with AGL looking like a clean company, meanwhile being the largest polluter. We know AGL's board are the key people that can send the company in the right direction towards renewable energy. And so we thought, how do we, how do we get them to change their mind? One was their customers, both their big industrial business customers and the householders. Two was their investors and financiers, i.e. the banks. The third one was changing the public perception of who this company really is. We want to jam up their social channels. Um, and that was kind of around really like empowered, excited, energised. I mean, it's a bunch of those I thought things, perhaps really. the cleverest strategy was the direct brand attack to use AGL's logo and, uh, and, and play on its initials. So AGL became Australia's greatest liability. We produced advertisements that went everywhere online, on social media, on websites, and on billboards. And AGL hated it because it told the truth of who they were. AGL clearly saw our advertisements on the first day they were launched, and they decided to sue us. Staring down AGL Energy in the federal court, Greenpeace, Australia Pacific, the dispute using the power company's logo alongside the tagline, Australia's greatest liability. So AGL at that point were claiming that we had breached copyright and trademark by using their company's logo in the parody advertisements. It cannot be ignored that there are clear exceptions under Australian law, which allow charities like Greenpeace to use trademark and copyright materials in campaigns like this one. A slap suit is a strategic lawsuit against public participation. It's a lawsuit that's taken against a small player, like a grassroots organisation or a charity, not to protect a legitimate business interest necessarily, but rather to censor them from speaking out against the company. You'll barely see the mention of the word coal in any of their advertising materials. They want to hide this away. This was a $5 billion company that was incredibly well resourced coming after us. And when a big fossil fuel company like AGL attempts to burden that freedom of speech, attempts to limit it, it's important that charities like Greenpeace hold their ground. We knew some of the information and the advertisements we were putting out there was risky, but we are willing to stand up to them. It is our pleasure to advise that the Honourable Justice Burley has handed down his decision in the AGL versus Greenpeace case. In court, Greenpeace argued successfully it was fair dealing for parody or satire. This is good for Australians, it's good for climate action. We are not going to stand by and have our environment and our society ruined by big polluters. What today's results shows is that the people will not be silenced. In the weeks after the lawsuit, something like 1,500 media organisations around the world, you know, everyone from the Washington Post to the little media guy down the street was reporting on this. In terms of a campaign launch, it really doesn't get much better than that. Hundreds of thousands of Australians went on that mental shift from AGL being a clean company to understanding really that it is Australia's greatest liability, its largest polluter. The power of the way 
Greenpeace works and creates change is that we have a wide toolkit of strategies that we deploy. So we're willing to work with companies and engage with them and speak with them, but we're also willing to put a lot of pressure on those companies in the public realm. So that's what we started to do. We went after AGL's finances and targeted Australia's big four banks, calling on them to stop funding AGL. We worked with AGL's sponsorship recipients. Zoo South Australia quickly dropped AGL as a sponsor and we called out AGL's sports washing. They think that by slapping a logo on a pair of footy player shorts, that's gonna help you forget that they're actually ruining our climate. And we engaged some of AGL's biggest customers, including Rio Tinto, cutting off demand for the company's dirty coal power. And we're also willing to work with shareholders, be they big billionaire investors or everyday shareholders. Every year, companies like AGL have an annual general meeting where they're held to account by their investors. We knew that it would be incredibly powerful for a young person to be supported to run for the board of a big polluting energy company. Ash Jane Sharif was at the time an 18-year-old school student who'd been involved in the climate strikes. And Ash could see that AGL's board of directors really didn't understand how to make the transition from a coal company across to a renewable energy company. We've seen that, you know, AGS shareholders are increasingly frustrated with the lack of action from AGL's leaders to commit to renewables and a sustainable future. It's costing them big time. AGL announced losses of over $2 billion over the last financial year. And so we supported Ash because it got the attention outside of the financial pages. AGL is literally trashing my future and yours. That is why I'm running for their board of directors, because I know I could do a better job than them. This is a world first for an activist running for the board of a big fossil fuel polluter. Also standing for election to the board is Ashjain Sharif. They had to go through the motions of responding. For the reasons set out in the notice of meeting, the board does not consider the election of Mr Sharif to be in the best interests of the company and recommends shareholders vote against the appointment. They didn't know how to deal with it and like the court case, they mishandled it. What it created was a big PR platform for Greenpeace and for Ash and for those seeking change at AGL to talk about an alternative vision. Ash Jain will outline why he's seeking your approval Financial markets are now moving at lightning pace towards climate action, leaving coal companies behind. AGL will struggle to gain financial support from banks, insurers and investors if it does not respond commensurately to the climate crisis. And Ash's nomination as an 18-year-old really focused the broader stakeholder groups on the contribution AGL was having to the climate crisis and the need for it to transition. Do you acknowledge that the UN and International Energy Agency say clearly that Australia has to stop burning coal by 2030 to address climate change? Um, I've already said that uh, targets are subject to review. The way I see it, land. Greenpeace helped to prepare the ground, helped to, uh, to dirty up the brand of AGL, helped to put pressure on the executives, on the board, have pressure come from the banks, from investors, and very importantly, from its customers. I found out that AGL are Australia's biggest climate polluter. As a mother of three kids, I'm really worried about the world that they will have to live in. I just had to switch. It's really important that everyday Australians have clear information about which company is the best when they're buying electricity. So Greenpeace did our own research and analysis, our own investigations to uncover who are the cleanest and greenest companies in Australia to buy electricity from and who are the dirtiest. So what is the Green Electricity Guide? It's a super easy way to see which electricity providers are credible on the environment and which are not. Out of all the electricity providers, AGL is the worst because of their climate pollution. I was involved in the Green Electricity Guide campaign because I thought it was outrageous that a company like AGL wasn't going to stop burning coal and were planning to continue to burn coal for another 20 years. It just didn't make sense. Are you anxious about the climate crisis? Want to spark change? 
So I ran in, into a report done by Greenpeace uh, about AGL and their contribution to the pollution in Australia. I realized that in a small action I can do a major change and I can switch my energy to a green er energy and not use their dirty coal energies. It felt really cool to be a part of a broader campaign that was going to make an impact. It was massive. Thousands of Australians switched to greener providers because of this. The work that Greenpeace has done is really impressive in showing what we can do and the impact that we can have as people when we do work together. Australia has some of the best solar and wind resources on the planet. We're really lucky. We have the ability to change fast and to have a really positive impact on the climate and on the environment. We can do this. We already are investing heavily in renewable energy. We just need to do it more quickly. And now that renewable energy is increasingly cheap and cheaper than coal and gas, they're finding the problem that they're running an expensive form of power generation that takes a lot of money to maintain. With respect to AGL's performance over the last five or so years, um, and the decisions made in the decade ahead of that, they've been they've been acquiring coal assets and they're crumbling. What's the view on AGL energy? I think um, AGL's energy generation uh, suite is probably worth zero, maybe negative. AGL, now their share price plummeted 9%. Over $10 billion in shareholder value has been wiped out in the last five years by the leadership of the AGL. And the board's decision to deal with that, rather than shifting to renewable energy, was to say, let's split the company in two. AGL is planning to divide into two companies. Ooh. But we'll still source our electricity from the same coal burning power stations. It was a corporate accounting trick. It wasn't going to fly with the public and it wasn't going to fly with AGL's investors, but they pushed for it anyway. The new company called Excel, as in accelerate the heat death of the earth, will make AGL's coal power plants disappear from the books. <laughs> the best thing they can do now is to change the leadership of the company because they've made appalling decisions and it's time for a fresh new vision. AGL has come under increasing pressure from activists and from investors and from consumers to clean up its act. Little did we know when Mike Cannon-Brooks had tweeted about the campaign during 2021 that he was actually preparing a bid to take over the company, i.e. to buy it out with another firm called Brookfield, so he could send it in the right direction towards renewable energy. And that's an incredible thing to do, and it was a game changer for the campaign. The bid is headlined by Mike Cannon-Brooks, a multi-billionaire. AGL has rejected an initial takeover bid. I think it's a seismic shift. To fast track its move out of coal. Possibly the most extraordinary bid in the history of the Australian electricity market. Decarbonisation became a focus of um, not just Greenpeace, but so many advocates in the space and so many members of the public uh, understood what needed to be done. I bought shares in AGL in early 2022 after it became public that there'd been a failed bid for the company. So what I found really unique about it was that with it there was vocalised a investment proposition that wouldn't just turn off fossil fuels much quicker than the status quo, but it was going to replace them with renewable energy sources such that wholesale energy prices wouldn't go up over time. Shareholder activists, these are people that want to buy shares or already own shares in these companies and push them in a different direction. And I think we're going to see more of that happen in Australia. We, we know that renewables are the cheapest source of energy generation. We know that our grid is very stable today. We know that the least reliable parts of our grid are the expensive coal plants we have that were built uh, roughly when man landed on the moon. What are we doing? Oh, uh, well, it's a lovely, clear, low wind morning here in Melbourne. And we're on our way to AGL's offices to give them a bit of a surprise. The reason we have people like Mike Cannon-Brooks circling around AGL is because this company hasn't budged, but they could also be leaders. We need AGL as a company to step up and take responsibility and to actually do something to deal with this climate crisis. Dirty coal power is too big to hide. 
Australian Brooks, tech billionaire the genius Mike behind Cunningham. Atlassian, Mike is a green warrior. He owns 11.3 percent of AGL shares. When Mike Cannon Brooks purchased an 11.3 percent stake in the company, that was almost like a nail in the coffin. I'm Mike Cannon Brooks, and today I represent the largest shareholder of AGL. But I need your help. We have one shot to decide this future by keeping it together. I need you to help us vote against and defeat the Dean merger. At the same time, Greenpeace was working on a campaign of our own. We knew if we could get 3,000 shareholders to turn up and vote no on the day, that would be enough to block the demerger. They needed 50% of shareholders to vote in favour of the demerger. And essentially what we could do is build out a voting block. So how did we do that? We cross-referenced AGL's shareholder register with our own Greenpeace database and worked out that 5,000 of our supporters already owned AGL shares. So we jumped on the phones, sent emails, contacting as many of these people as possible. Other investors are also saying no. Chief Executive Debbie Blakely today said responsible investors have a responsibility to their members to go where the biggest emissions are and as investors to try and change the behaviour of these companies. I saw the demerger vote coming in June and so I thought I'm going to take a position personally and share why I've taken a position and vote no because I didn't think it was in shareholder interests and I thought it was going to be such a shame for the world if this opportunity, this global case study of decarbonisation done in an economically efficient way didn't play out. The Corporation Act exists to allow shareholders to have their say and to work together to be able to tell boards of directors um, what they want the company to be and empowering them to be able to speak up and agitate for change. And so I was just throwing everything I had at chatting to impact investors and sophisticated investors about why I'd done what I'd done so that if they saw the same thing that I did, they'd make the right decision as well. The critical thing that's happened was all of these forces coming together and it quickly became clear that even if Mike Cannon Brooks's plan to block the demerger failed, by harnessing the power of Greenpeace's supporters, we had a really good shot of blocking it ourselves. The incredible amount of opposition that had already been built amongst the investor base as a result of Greenpeace and other civil society organisations working together on this campaign scared the company enough and its board of directors that it actually, even before the vote, decided not to go ahead with the demerger. The energy giant claims it's due to a lack of sufficient shareholder support. They've also announced the resignation of Chief Executive Graham Hunt and Chairman Peter Boffin. Not only did the demerger fail, but AGL's CEO, Chairman and two directors were forced to resign from the board. It was one of the biggest upsets in Australian corporate history. It meant that AGL had to completely rethink the future of the business and it was clear to everybody that this couldn't include coal. The Australian public wouldn't stand for it, their customers wouldn't stand for it and neither would their shareholders. Australia's biggest and oldest energy producer today said it will stop generating electricity with coal by 2035. Signalling the death knell for coal mining in the Latrobe Valley. An energy giant closing a decade early. So the next step is to rebuild the board uh, with the skills, talent you know, and courage to take this company through the, the transition ahead and, and benefit from all those opportunities. Look. AGL committing to quit coal by 2035 still isn't quite good enough. We need them to quit coal by 2030, but the momentum is now all on our coal side. By 2030. Dangerous and dirty. Quit coal by 2030. AGL's old leaders stepping down has paved the way for new leadership at the company. Leadership that has the skills and experience needed to accelerate its decarbonisation journey. Protests outside the energy giant's AGM, a green sweep inside AGM. AGL shareholders voted resoundingly for an entire new leadership team. Four new members put forward by climate activist and tech multi-billionaire Mike Cannon-Brooks. Shareholders today expressed a different view. The majority of the board now is pro-renewable energy and moving much faster to decarbonise the company. Greenpeace Australia says this could mark a watershed moment for Australia's biggest climate polluter. This is globally significant, what's happened. Australia's biggest climate polluter is now going to be transformed into a renewable energy powerhouse. And so many people have contributed to that. Shareholders, customers, everyday Greenpeace supporters have all done their bit to create this incredible outcome. With the right leaders now in place, 
we're confident the cold closure timelines will come forward. AGL is such a big organisation and have so much power. I really wasn't sure how much impact Greenpeace would have, but you know, now we've seen that through their different campaigns and through the power of the people, we have made a change. The plans were to be in coal till 2050, but now, just two years later, I can see that we, we do have a clear path to Australia hitting our 2030 targets. There's been a lot of work by Greenpeace, for instance, you know, with respect to AGL as, you know, the largest polluter. Um, there's been a lot of shareholder activism that I think is also like leading to these shifts. And these shifts are really significant. It's a phenomenal achievement. Like, it really is a moment to stand back and go, this is what it's all about that this, in real terms, reduces the amount of pollution going into the world very substantially from the biggest polluter in our region and one of the major polluters on the planet. Greenpeace played a very big role in, in this campaign. One of the things it did really well is catalyse others into the space. I really feel that as a consumer, I have power and Every step that we take forward will bring us to where we want to be and to a safer planet and to a safer future for our kids. Well, Greenpeace is really just the sum total of our supporters. They're critical to the work that we do. It's the actions of everyday people that fund us and that work with us together to put pressure on these decision makers to change. That's how we see change. When we got sued by AGL, we had donors reaching out and saying, hey, you need help with legal costs. Like, we're here to support you. We really want to see this precedent set, and we're proud of you for speaking up. We exist to speak truth to power. We will not be bullied by a large fossil fuel company. This is our job, and we're going to do it. We can see that there is light at the end of the tunnel. The rate at which we're building renewables in Australia and retiring coal, when Liddell closes, it's the 14th coal power station to close in Australia in the last decade. We are winning and there's a lot of evidence that we are accelerating in our winning. This is Australia's biggest climate polluter, which is now on a much faster course towards renewable energy. There's so much more work we can do and much more impact we can have on the back of this extraordinary outcome.